on the blues. Uh, Johnny Masso, nice to meet you here. Huh? Uh, you're enjoying the blues before you, uh, the next day you're gonna get on stage. Yes, I'm uh, uh, having a great time. Everything's going really good. Hey, how's the tour so far going in, in Europe? Uh, it's It's been fantastic, man. We've been um, uh, doing very well in Germany and uh, we we had a day off in Antwerp and then we came came here. So, you know, I wanted to get an idea about what it's going to be like and we had the uh, today off, so it's fantastic. Well, you get a big idea with the last band, Big Blind. I can see how the crowd is reacting. That's going to be the, probably the same tomorrow. The big Blind? Yeah. I don't, I don't know that band. Would it? No, it's a, it's a Dutch band. It's a, and it's, trust me, they're going to rock the house. You released your new CD, Beautiful Chaos, uh, uh, probably six, seven weeks ago. Yeah. How are the reactions so far in Europe? It's been very good. You know, we're doing it on our own, uh, just releasing it and um, sending it to certain, uh, you know, radio stations, and um, it's uh, the the response has been very good. But you, you do it in your hands. Is it is it uh, a must, or is it just fun? I want to keep the money myself because the the big production and the big record companies are doing not enough for me. I I'm not sure. It's a you know we made the record. We're very proud of it, and and um, we believe in it. You know, and I'm not sure if uh, other people are going to have to see. You know what what what. What Europe thinks of the record? How's your vision of uh, how your uh, vision on the internet is your CD uh, selling good uh, through uh, online stages? Yeah, so you can buy it through JohnnyMastro.com, and 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 uh, and then we're going to try to get distribution, you know. But it, uh, um, it as you know, it's a di difficult business, you know. Yeah, you know. Hey, well, recording a CD. How is working with you guys, Johnny Master and Mama's Boys? Um, is it Johnny Messer who write all the songs and only silent guitar players are doing a little bit if they were asked to uh, on the rehearsals? Yeah, that's exactly how it is. I, I, I want no input from, from the band. It's all about me and that's it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, the, uh, it's a group of me and, me and uh, uh, the guitar player uh, wrote most of the songs together in my apartment in Long Beach. And then um, the bass and the drums came later. And when we got in the studio, we went to Detroit uh, and recorded at Ghetto Recorders at, uh, uh, with Jim Diamond as the producer. And we just kind of let him guide us a little bit. But I had the most of the songs uh, worked out already, you know. And he just added and kind of uh, made things a little bit better. Is the role of producer important to you? Yes, it's very important. And, and in fact, I think one of the biggest problems with blues and, and music, uh, somebody needs to, to produce the record, you know, whether it's the, one of the band members, but I mean, they, they need to uh, take uh, time to, to think about what they're putting on, on the record, you know, and, uh, small, small arrangements and, you know, sequence of the songs and making sure you have a mix, you know, and, and, and to go to Jim Diamond, it was great because he he took care of a lot of uh, things and he took one song and changed it. There's a song that uh, people really like called Shades of Grey and I in my head I had it a certain way but he took it and made it like a s nice slow blues and it worked out fantastic, you know. Well, you made you made a couple of times our playlist. But tomorrow on stage, um, it's going to rock. Uh, well, I would think it's going to be good. I I'm I was a little nervous that it's at midnight. I hope everybody's still here and standing, you know. Not too drunk. Well, some people are leaving, but I think you're going to rock the house. I, we definitely will have will have a good time. We're going to play our best, and uh, it's the best. Uh, you know, we've been playing uh, as a, you know four guys, and we have a special guest coming up tomorrow night. Um, at the very end, we got some special guests, and it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun.
question about blues and, and, and the sort of the music you play. Um, which song or which artist inspired you to get up there on stage and do your thing in the blues? Yeah, um, well, I would think when I moved when I moved to Los Angeles, um, it's kind of younger, in my early 20s, mid 20s, early 20s, and I found a, a club called Babe and Ricky's Inn, and the owner. Mama, who we named a band after, just took me under her wing uh, for, for 16 years. Uh, she passed away in October of last year, but she was my biggest, uh, probably, influence, you know. And I, I know that sounds weird. She wasn't a musician. She was a club owner. But we had a special relationship, you know. And by playing at her club every night and watching her and listening to her, she taught me so much. I miss her, you know. Um, but did, did she deserve the tribute on your new uh, album? I was still in uh, work in progress. Yeah, she she deserves uh, whatever I could you know give back to her. So she was a big influence because she kind of taught me a lot about the business and also about um, you know what people like uh, uh, playing with soul. Have your own sound, get your own sound, you know. Um, and then also when I moved to to L.A., uh, William Clark and Lester Butler uh, were playing all around and and that was unbelievable and you have james Harmon that was that still playing now and rod piazza there's so many good harmonica players so that inspired me you know and and then of course what now that i'm trying to do is we have our own style of music and uh we're doing our own thing so i took a little lester and a little william clark and a little uh of led zeppelin and a little bit of the white stripes and we mixed it all up together you know yeah i can handle it i want to give you a quick Low down on the band, on the guitar, straight out of Long Beach, this is the Smokehouse, everybody, Smokehouse Brown. On the drums, this is Jimmy Goodall, Jimmy, Jimmy Goodall. And on the bass, I'm down for the one, the only Mr. Michael Hightower. Mr. Hightower, man. Yeah, I'm Johnny Mastro, I'm glad you this in, man. You were drinking Dutch or Belgian beer. <laughs> that, that's not unusual. I'm a big fan. My, uh, uh, I, I, I've been called Captain Trappist before. Like this, I'm, I like Duvel. Yeah, uh, Duvel's very good. Uh, last night uh, to, uh, to Osbel, I went out and I got uh, a, a, a Rochefort and a Westmall a double, and I've got a, a, a beautiful. Um, uh, uh, there was another Trappist, Orval. Yeah. You know, so anyway, yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll use those throughout the weekend to get in the right spirit of the of the music. Yeah, a colleague of mine for the radio station emailed you the the addresses where you could get Belgian beer in uh, in America. Yeah, we're you know we're kind of big fans. I'm fascinated with uh, the fact that there are monks out there that make beer, and that um, you know it's a tradition that's been going on for many years in Europe. You know, and salad. Yes, it's it's fantastic. So my goal is maybe to uh, uh, quit music and join the monks, the Trappist monks. I think that's what I'll do when, when I'm done with the music, you know. And then uh, have one beer a day and uh, pray and uh, spend a lot of time by myself and um, in serving, you know, the higher power. You don't see like a very religious guy to me, but you you can change. I'll, I'll have to shave my head, you know, but it'll be okay. But because I, I really like those robes, the brown robes that they wear, so I'm, I'm fascinated by it. I think it's going to be. If you're talking longer, it's going to be a real crazy interview. Thank you very much for your uh, support in this interview.